Hello everybody, welcome to Wing Pillow Talk. Another awesome day. We're grateful to God for his mercies that are new upon us every day. I don't know what form of brokenness you have gone through or you're still going through. Today I have a word for you. God is going to take every issue of brokenness in your life and make it a masterpiece for others to see and learn. I will share three stories with you as I was meditating. Just dropped in my spirit. Three stories that will bless you. Hey, I'm not an, I'm not, I'm not, (laughs) I'll just say it as I'm led by the spirit of God, right? The first story I'll share with you is the story of David, a man after God's heart, so we're told. David was a warrior king and he defeated so many nations and so many cities for God. At this point in time, when warrior kings were going out to fight, David stayed back and stayed at home and happened to be at the top of his home where he saw a beautiful woman having a bath and, of course, seduced the woman, raped her and planned an act to kill the husband and eventually did. And when David did that act, he realized he had sinned against God. And he asked God to have mercy upon him. I don't know whether where you are. Like so many of us, we think we have the looks. We think we have the money. We think you're able to manipulate. You're, able, you're so cunning. You're so secretive to do things hidden and to ruin other people's lives. Without realizing there is a God that sees it all and that knows it all. And God is waiting for you. You've caged yourself in a situation where you're constantly looking back and looking forward on the actions you're doing. Hiding, being very secretive, sending texts, deleting, undeleting, going to your history and re-deleting everything. Thinking you are outsmarting people. But actually, if you look back, you're putting yourself in a cage. You've caged yourself in a situation. And you think you're having life. Your actions alone are telling you you're not having life. But you're actually in bondage. It is time for you to look for that place of brokenness within you. And seek the face of God and ask for mercy. I don't know where you have been broken by God because of the actions. You know, funny how we all think we're handsome, we're good looking, we have the money to go in and out, the men and the women, until an illness shows up. And then we all seem to knock the door of God at this point in our broken state, where you know nothing, not not your looks, not the money, not any issue can help you, but the mercy of God. Let us get to a position where we all look up to God and cry out for mercy. The second story I'll share with you this evening is a story about Joseph. You, the, your brokenness can come through your family, through friends, through people you thought you could rely on, you rely on, you, you had secrets with, you did things for. Joseph's brothers connived with each other to get him killed and changed their minds and sold him to a strange land. But then within themselves agreed to tell the father Joseph was killed by wild animals. And they saw their father mourn for years and nobody could come clean to say, yes, that it was a lie. Actually, we sold him. We don't know whether he's alive or not, but we know he's somewhere. And they thought that secret was going to be hidden forever until they had, they, had, uh, they had the point where they needed to go to Egypt to get food because famine on the land was so severe. And at this point, when they went to Egypt, God has elevated their brother from nothing to second in command in a nation. Because Joseph was, Joseph was favorite in his worship to God, even in all his brokenness, He never departed from God. He looked up to God because he knew God was the answer to him. He went to Potiphar's house, moved from one place to another as a slave child, went to Potiphar's house where he prospered and he then gave him in charge of the whole house. But the wife wanted a piece of him and he ran for his life, says, 
I will not sin against God. His, the fear of God consumed the way he lived his life. And even in the brokenness in prison, he prospered. He prospered to a point where God removed him and created a position and put him second in command because he was faithful. We knew he was broken because he shared his story in prison. He says, I wasn't supposed to be here. I don't know where I'm here. I'm not even an uh, Egyptian. I'm a Hebrew who was sold by my own blood and flesh. I don't know where you are in life where you're betrayed by people who you really love, by people who you care about, by your own siblings, by your own family, because they have written you off and thought you were nothing. It is time for you to seek God and seek him more than ever before. In your brokenness, God will elevate you to make you a masterpiece for others to emulate and copy. The last story I'll share with you this evening is a story about the prodigal son. He'd worked hard, he'd amassed wealth with his father, and he thought he could take care of himself. He was man enough to take decisions on his own without consulting anybody. He went to his father and said, Father, it's time for me. I want my own share of inheritance. I want to live my own life. The father said, really, you're entitled to. And he gave him the inheritance. And of course, like most of us, when we have money, what do we do? You start doing all the wrong things. You start taking drugs. You start chasing men, you start chasing women, you start drinking, you start doing all the useless things that derail you from the presence of God, which the prodigal son did. And of course, the money got finished. He started living like a peasant. He started living like a slave somewhere where it was unable for him to eat. And in his brokenness, he realized that even the servants in his father's house ate better than where he was and where he was sleeping. And he came to the realization of himself saying, I will go back to my father and say, have mercy. I have sinned not only against you, father, but I've sinned against God. Take me back as one of your servants in your house that I may eat. Funny how in the brokenness, he realized with all the knowledge he thought he had, he didn't. Funny how some of us are living double life, triple lives, trying to do actions, make things and do the wrong things and take the wrong decisions. Thinking you're deceiving somebody, you're actually deceiving yourself. Funny how your friends can derail you and make you go through a point where when things get bad, they all turn their backs away from you and you're left on your own. And in that brokenness, you have no one to turn to. I have come to encourage you today. It doesn't matter where you are. It doesn't matter what sins you have committed. If you cry out to God and you're able to transform, your God is able to transform you and change your story. That is if you're willing to change yourself. God will meet you halfway. Some of us think we have it all. Instead of you gossiping about somebody, instead of you speaking bad about somebody, My darling brothers and sisters, it is time for all of us to grow up. Grow up to know the world we live in. Brokenness will knock at your door at a certain point in time, at a certain day. So there is no point being critical, being hypocritical about what somebody else is going through. Or thinking your life is getting, has all, you've ticked all the I's and crossed all the T's. Life shows us that we all will go through brokenness. It is our duty to support one another, empower one another, hold one another to the finish line. The number of time, the number of hours you spend gossiping about somebody, if you could just spend half of that hours praying for somebody, the world we live in will be a better place. The brokenness the person finds themselves in they will come out quicker than you'll ever think or imagine. So in your days of brokenness, there'll be people also praying for you. For you and I to come to this understanding, for you and I to come to this realization, we need to dig really deep, really deep within ourselves to transform ourselves. Fill ourselves with the fear of God. Look up to God and ask him to help us. Have mercy upon us. Clean us 
change our hearts. I had to serve him. I had to look up to him. I had to be empowered by him to help the next generation, to uplift the next generation, to empower the next generation, to look up to the most high God and be a blessing to nations. Thank you so much. Love you guys. God bless. Bye for now. <laughs>